and welcome to the Mrs. V Night Shift. Uh, welcome, welcome. I'm very excited tonight. We have the gorgeous Alison Maiden here. Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> My favourite person to talk to because she knows about everything. <laughs> You know. So I tell my husband. <laughs> <laughs> so tonight it's it's great to, to have you kind of talk about some fun stuff, you mm -hmm. know, really about and about you and what you love. And so firstly, we're going to start with the question about how was your day today? My day was awesome. I had um, four beautiful clients today and um, I just had the most wonderful readings with them and the last one I actually actually blew myself away the last one because I did so well. <laughs> Love that. So, so I actually impressed myself today. Oh good. <laughs> she impresses me all the time. But anyway, go, what happened? What happened? Oh, just a lovely lady um, who came to me for my, mainly for mediumship, for spirit contact. Because I do both, you know, yes. uh, in my readings. So yes. I actually do um, forward predictions as well. And um, But this particular lady had so many relatives in spirit world. We ended up, you know, spending the whole time talking to about 15 different people as they were coming through and all validating with really unusual and wonderful things. And oh, awesome. um, yeah, just it was a it was a really wonderful experience and we laughed and cried together and it was great. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> yeah. That was a very good day. I didn't have any day like that. Oh, I think I was at my computer most of the day oh, today. Awesome. But that's okay, we have those days. Now the question, I guess, is from Genesis V, which uh, I think people would mostly want to know, is, is there um, a life after death? Oh, well, I, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. There'd have to be, or you'd have to put me in an institution, because <laughs> you know, otherwise, you know, where would I get my information from? This is the thing. Yes, yes, you um, totally believe it. And yeah. from when you were little as well? That you yeah, know. look, I mean, the first recollection I had was, um, that I can remember, of course, um, I was about five years old and um, I remember very vividly um, my mum uh, used to work in a hospital and so she would work night shift and mm. she'd come in and she'd tuck me in yeah. Yeah, the night shift. <laughs> Sorry. she'd tuck me in and she'd go off and, and there was always this lady that used to come in about half an hour after she left and she would sit on my bed and she would pat me and it was this little old lady and um, it was a couple of years later that I actually said to my mum, I remember saying to her, oh, who's that lady that comes in and takes care of me when you're at work? And she went, what lady? Oh my God, <laughs> yeah. So uh, we figured out uh, through my description of her that she was the lady that owned the house before us. <gasps> oh my so God, she, <laughs> this bum. But she was lovely to me. She was very loving and nurturing and, um, and so my mum, who was actually psychic as well, and my grandmother, my, mo my grandmother actually used to read tea leaves in this little county in England, oh. and she was the local tea leaf reader, and they used to go to her for all sorts of things, love spells and stuff. Yeah, well. okay. yes. um, so we have had a big family history of it, so it was no surprise to her that I maybe had inherited the gift. But then I started to do predictions that were happening as well. I'd, I'd tell her someone was coming to the door and they would, and. You know, those sorts of things. So she encouraged me from a really young age. And so, you know, from we all used to read tea leaves as well. So I was six years old and reading tea leaves. Oh, and, my gosh. Wow. And she, um, she used to use the playing cards, you know, normal playing cards yeah. um, to read with. So I learnt on that to start with. And then I switched to tarot when I was about 12. See, it's amazing that, and I think, oh, this is such a big conversation to have, you know, sorry, I can't help myself. But it is, it's, it's that interesting thing about the people, because I know everyone has their own religion and they talk about it, mm -hmm. but, you know, personally, I don't think religion has anything to do with it. It's more like what is truth and what's there. And, of course, is, you know, that there's got to be something else other than what we see, you know. Look, you know what, I think everybody's where they need to be at any given time and whatever mm. their belief system is. Um, and I think it's really important for us to believe in something. And mm. um, I mean, I, I have to say that and I, through the years, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm 52 and I've done a lot in my life and mm. I've had lots of experiences on lots of different levels. As you know, I was a paramedic for a while as well. Yes. And so I've seen people's belief in, in the afterlife I've seen their belief in God and I've seen people you know praying for a miracle and all those sorts mm. of things and I've actually seen miracles happen so I would have to say that the belief in in something other than us is inherent in everyone really yeah. um, whether or not they want to admit it is another thing <laughs> yes that's the thing and it's such a big conversation I think it's going to be talked about a lot more uh, in time
times to come, yes? Mm, yes. <laughs> There's lots more. So tell me, um, what is the biggest shift you've ever had in your life? Oh my goodness, the biggest one. Wow. Would have to be probably my mother passing. Oh wow, okay. Yeah, because you know, she was this beacon, this guiding light in my life. Um, mm -hmm. And growing up, as you can probably imagine, I was different. Um, yes. And feeling everybody's emotions and sometimes being really overwhelmed, particularly at school. Um, I remember very vividly um, coming home once and there were these girls on bikes and they were teasing me as usual because I used to get teased a lot. Um, and I actually said to them, be careful, like I screamed at them, be careful, stop, you're going to get hit by a car. And just as I said it, this car came around the corner and nearly wiped them out. Now, that instead of being grateful, of course, they were then calling me a freak. So it got a whole lot worse. So I ended up having to change schools. So wow. she protected me. She helped me through what was a difficult childhood. Um, and uh, she was just the most amazing and incredibly giving woman and the most amazing mother. Mm. And so I lost her when I was um, very young. So I was about 29. And um, I had children of my own by that stage as well. And it really, it, it really left a huge hole, even though I know that she's in a great place, even though I could still hear her voice, which I still do every day. Mm. Um, I understand the, the loss of the physicality of it. I understand not being able to hug them, being able to hold them. Uh, I understand that. And, um, and that to me really put me more in contact with the people I was helping because wow. I understand grief. Yeah, yeah. wow, okay. That was a big shift to it happen. I big. haven't experienced that myself yet. It's not my mum around, but I'm not looking forward to it because I just know that, you know, all for all the reasons that you said, having them there. So, mm. okay. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me, what is then the best? Um, oh, sorry, best advice that you've ever been given? Wow, best advice. Well, I get really good advice every day from the powers of be. Yes. Um, <laughs> of course. <laughs> probably the best advice for me, being the stubborn Virgo that I am, I'm very stubborn. <laughs> I am an eight life path as well, so I do need to be in control of right. my own destiny, um, was to um, to move forward from um, my career as, an, as a paramedic and to move into this full time. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Um, right. And I had uh, some very wonderful people around me at that time. Uh, the doctor that actually was in charge of the ambulance service, who I was working with, um, he said to me, you know, even though he wasn't a believer as such, um, <laughs> mm. they used to call me Richie Poo, you know. Because oh, I was about to say, when you were talking about <laughs> that thing with the kids, I could imagine them going, you're a witch. I can you can see in those yeah, days yeah. how that whole thing started. Oh, yeah. Berner, she's a witch. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> um, but it, in... In the ambulance service, yes. it was always a bit of a joke. But right, okay. um, yeah, he, he just said to me, look, you, you, you're you going to save souls on a whole different level now. Oh. And I went, wow, that, that was really profound for me. And um, and I think that, that he actually helped me not only get over the grief of the huge change that was happening in my life. I went from mm. one career to another, yeah, which it. was, you know, really, when you think about it, doing what I do and, and being as open with it as I am, um, it's quite challenging on lots of levels because you get people judging you, of course, mm. but in every, everything you do, you know, yeah, people yeah, judge. Yeah. But um, I think that uh, having the courage to actually move into this full time um, really did come from him. So thanks, Dr. Grantham. You Fantastic advice, box. yes, thank you. Because <laughs> we have her now oh. out there helping us. So um, Fantastic. And now the best tool for, overcome, for overcoming challenges, what would be your mm. best tool? Oh, look, um, Reiki. Number oh, one, okay. number one. You know, um, people don't understand its power, and um, it is unconditional love. It is. Mm. Uh, it's a Japanese word, you see, and it's, it was rediscovered by a Japanese physician. And we say rediscovered because it's been around since the beginning of time. But what it is, it's it's your soul is made of pure love. Okay. Yeah. And when someone's attuned to Reiki, they're able to channel that unconditional love through their bodies, healing them first, and then healing the people that they're putting their hands on or putting their thought towards. So wow. it is an amazing, amazing tool. And I say to everybody that um, I teach, um, Reiki is going to set you up for life. It is the thing that um, I, I thoroughly recommend to everybody. Even if you don't want to become a practitioner, you can you can definitely go and have Reiki healings that 
will help you. One thing, it's so funny because I've heard a lot about Reiki and, mm. and, and not understand it. Um, I don't, can you just do it yourself? Or Because I kind of, there's a part of me that doesn't like that you have to go and be tuned. Because <laughs> I think, like in a way, because I think we're yeah. all, we all have that power to Okay, so everyone's got me. love within them. Absolutely, yes. I agree with you. Yeah. And I was like you. Yeah. Okay, so for many years, you could remember I was working as a psychic when I first mm. heard about Reiki 20 years ago. And I went, I don't need that. I'm a spiritual healer. It's all fine, you know, my typical Virgo arrogantness. Yeah. And so I went along and um, with my friend who begged me to go to this workshop with him. And he said, come on, I want to do it with someone. Please come. And I said, oh, all right then. And the profound shift and change that I had on that day um, was quite incredible and um, the, the feeling was completely different and look yes you have to go and be attuned by a Reiki master um, in order to have this energy flowing through you but there's a reason for that and that is because when we have our own blocks um, we can't really help other people sufficiently enough um, and it's like the wounded healer you know people that go out there oh, and try yeah, and heal yeah. others in order to try and heal themselves um, Reiki starts with you and it starts from the inside out. So it's healing you as you're healing others. Wow. Ooh, I like the sound of that. It is quite profound. I do because I know sometimes when I'm like, I can't sleep or something, I'll just put on my belly to try and draw the energy down. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would never think to do it to it, someone else or anything, but I understand that the hands hold something. But that is the most perfect thing about it is when yeah. you're giving love to someone else. It's mm. the best thing in the universe that you could possibly do. Okay, I'm going to be doing it. So stay tuned <laughs> about you. that one. I'll attune you and then yes. you can tell everybody. Oh, yes. Okay. <laughs> I'll take you off. Um, <laughs> so tell me, what is your favourite Australian made product? It can be anything. Young Living Oils. Young Living Oils? Oh my oh, goodness. Really? Amazing. Okay, well, I'll have to put the link underneath. Tell me about them. <clears throat> they are um, an amazing brand of essential oils that just hold... The most incredible vibration and um, and I initially again I'm a skeptical person isn't that funny <laughs> that is good isn't you that have that to funny? find out but that yeah and I, I have my beautiful niece actually in South Australia who um, she really champions these oils and um, she said to me you, you must try them and I I'm very sensitive to all sorts of things and I said oh you know I don't really want to put them on my skin or anything mm. but I'll I'll smell them and see how we go, you mm -hmm. know. Um, and look, it, they are incredibly powerful. Um, wow. And I do believe that um, the vibration of them is very, very high. And so they didn't give me the normal reactions that I get when I use other essential oils. So now I can have them burning in my house or I can put them in other carrier oils and things and I can use them. But yeah. frankincense is an amazing oil. It's very powerful for cleansing. And it's okay. good if you get sinus problems. Just oh, very good. Yes. Funny you should pick that up. Okay. <laughs> well, you know, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I have sinus problems. Okay, frankincense. <laughs> That's so funny. Can't get away with anything. All right, beautiful. Well, um, we're going to put the link up below so people okay. can find it. So thank you. And then what's your favourite nightcap? Oh, oh, well, um, I have a lot of allergies to things and yeah. I don't I haven't drunk alcohol for eight years so um, as far as a nightcap goes I can have cocoa which I do enjoy oh, very yes. much cocoa. with rice milk with rice milk <laughs> my god I've never had cocoa it with rice milk it actually is very tasty is it? yeah it's really nice it's funny because I haven't been, I haven't drunk alcohol since April and uh -huh. um, and I'm feeling so much better I know Oh, but yeah, it makes a big difference. And I love it. I was saying to someone that I've just missed the idea of it, like mm. having a champers or something with someone, but I don't miss the physical. No. It's actually, I had a sip the other day. We were out and I had, um, oh, actually, at the end of the event, I had a glass oh, of champagne. Yes. I thought, I'll have a champagne because I just finished yeah. so ill for mm. the next two days. Mm. Migraine. Do you know it's a shame because it's not actually the uh, the alcohol itself; it's yeah. the preservatives and all the other rubbish right. they put in with it that really gives us the headaches and the, the stuff. Yes, I was so sick; I couldn't believe it, and yeah. I, I knew the sensitivity with it. But yeah, it's a shame. It's a shame. So uh, for me, the nightcap is the same. It's like a tea yeah. or a water. Yeah. Very happy with anything, really. <laughs> um, so now we're going to pull an affirmation card. Now these are Ooh, one of my yes, little affirmation like cards. Have yes. you seen these before? I have. Yes. Oh, yes. So we pull yes. one for uh, the day for everyone tomorrow, okay. and what they're going to have. Oh, I'm going to get a good one for everyone. Of course. Oh, good. Of course. All right. So let's split that. Okay. There we go. 
I'm able to make positive shift because... Oh, you got like the the key card. Of course. Of course. <laughs> which is, um, as just to, in case it's the first time you've heard about it, the cards are about finding a reason in you, in your mind, um, to make it your own affirmation. So, for example, this one is, I'm going to create a positive shift because I've actually been doing, for me, what comes up is I've been doing the work, the grounded work, to create what I want in the world. So, therefore, I bring it to life. So... Mm -hmm. Um, and if you have to think about where in your life, and perhaps today was a time where you just felt, oh, I can't make it happen, I can't do it, this will help you find the reason. And it might be uncomfortable, but that's the thing that you need to um, to find. Brilliant. I love it. Yes, did, did you find one? <laughs> you don't <have> to share it. <laughs> Maybe it was towards everybody else. <laughs> yeah, I think I need, I actually... Um, have already decided that I'm going to make a positive shift with my work. Great. So that was that had come to me earlier today. Oh, great. Um, yeah, I think my biggest challenge is um, reaching more people because I really love the group work and I love doing the shows, the big shows that, yeah. that we do, you know, and uh, that, that just helps so many people and a lot of people, even if they aren't read, come up afterwards and say, oh, my God, you, you've really shifted me because I, yeah. you know, I wasn't a believer before, but now I am. That sort of stuff, I think, is wonderful, and I think I need more of that. So I'm working towards that. And that's a good thing. We need more of Alison because I've sat in on some of her shows, and it is very, um, it's so inspiring because I see people who've lost loved ones, and um, and just to kind of know that everything's okay and they're okay and you're on the right path, and it's all for a reason in a funny way. I mean, some people don't like that, but. It's all part of the bigger picture, I think, and um, seeing yeah. that. So, um, thank you. Yeah. So, last but not least, but love and sparkle and good night. And uh, thank you very much for joining us. Always a pleasure, Sarah. And stay tuned. We're going to now record the podcast. So, we're going to talk about everything else in a much fuller way. And I want to, I want to really share Alison's story. So, um, uh, have a look at that below. And uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you. Good night. Bye.